What are the latest findings in relation to B12 and the diets of meat eaters and vegetarians? Well, this is a really interesting one, and this is one of my newest revelations. Uh, several years ago, we started to gather some of the leaders in health from around the globe, and we've had two summits, international summits. The third will be in the middle of 2009. These are very copacetic meetings with very mature health professionals that we've all dedicated our life to this. And we have these meetings to gather a very clear and concise message to bring out to the world. And what happened is in the first meeting we had, uh, my colleague, Dr. Gabriel Cousins, as well as my colleague, uh, George Malcolmus from Hallelujah Acres, both aired to me that they were now looking at urine tests for B12 deficiencies. Well, Hippocrates was the only institute or organization that had done long-term testing on hundreds and hundreds of people for B12, or the deficiency of B12, over decades. And we were finding that people who ate the way we tell them to eat and adhere to that, we wouldn't have B12 deficiencies. They then suggested that we better not look at blood tests anymore to look at urine tests. Uh, when this subject came up, I said, gee, what provoked you to do this? And they mentioned what I consider the most important biological test on humans ever conducted called the Framingham study. Now, the Framingham study was created about 60 years ago, uh, Framingham being a town that's not far from Boston proximity, and Harvard University was doing research on this population, looking at the effect that cholesterol has on cardiovascular disease and later cancer and other, other concerns. They did a testing to show that uh, very, very large amounts of the population, general population, meat consumers, dairy consumers, uh, not vegans, if any vegans, if any uh, vegetarians were involved, it was a fraction of 1%, I'm sure. They were on the fourth generation, and they show that well over one-third of the people had B12 deficiencies with urine tests. So this certainly sparked my interest several years ago, and I went in and I spent some time at uh, the New York University Medical Library and the Harvard Medical Library and started to look at anatomical pictures and drawings of the human intestinal tract, knowing that B12 is literally a soil-based bacteria that was improperly placed under B vitamins because we didn't have a probiotic or healthy biology uh, department back when B12 was discovered. And I knew that how it worked anatomically is it would go into the small intestine, into the large intestine, and stay in the large intestine, as other good healthy bacteria are to do, and cultivate itself so that you didn't need B12 on a daily basis. You could have it, and it would be there to provide B12. Now, B12 is, is a crucial and essential nutrient. Why? Because it has everything to do with neurons, the neurons in the brain, and the neurons that work and function your what? nervous system. And when I started to look at these drawings, I said, my God, I can't be the first person who ever did this. When I went back 300 years to about 1700, the large intestine looked radically different than it does today. What happened, and I don't want to speak about this without drawings here, but in one of the magazines that I publish, I put this drawing in. And if you wanted to access some of the archives of Hippocrates magazines from our website, you may get to see the picture. But at the end of the large intestine, where the small intestine dumps digested food, there was a little pocket or looked like the front of a boot that was historically and consistently there. Assumably, uh, in that state or in a larger state, a longer state, for the entire history of humanity before that. By the time we got into the 20th century, that was about absent. By the time we got into the 21st century, it was absent. And what used to be an elongated appearing front of the boot now is a shriveled up appendix that modern medicine says has no reason to be there. I guess somebody made a mistake in that anatomy. Now, what has happened is that B12 needs to consistently be consumed by all people, practically on a daily basis, because that little pocket was for the lack of a better way to explain it to you, the organic garden. When the organic foods were consumed, plant-based foods, and the soil-based bacteria, B12 was on it, it would come down and cultivate itself in that pocket and maintain your B12 levels. The pocket isn't there anymore. So we find that everyone has B12 deficiencies, that everyone requires 
B12, this is another kinker, 99% uh, on the market is chemically made in laboratories and on the side it says natural and slapped and they talked people out of colobalamin, which is the bacterial form of it. This is what people need to take, but there's only a very small amount of this on the marketplace available. Uh, natto, which is a Japanese food, a very untasty fermented <laughs> soy product that's like glue, also contains adequate amount of B12. In the past, we used to believe algaes had this, tempeh had this. We now know that it doesn't convert over to be usable B12 in the body. So again, everyone needs it. Now here's another little interesting point. The people with the highest incidence or largest levels of B12 deficiencies consume the most meat and the most dairy. Now, remember, animals have lots of B12. Why? Because where is their beak and where are their teeth all day long? On the soil. But what do people do? They don't go out and take the animal and drink blood from its neck and get fresh bacteria. Let's thank God for that. What they do is have some rancher somewhere in the world, slaughter the animal, freeze it, send it, and then they cook it. Bacteria, as you understand, is heat sensitive. So their bodies, unfortunately, have a neutered form of B12 coming in with the carcasses that they're consuming. The body now assumes that they're getting some level of B12 that is completely unusable, 100% unusable, and that's why they have a higher deficiency level. We assume that if a child is born and in the womb was eating a very healthy vegan living food diet that contained massive amounts of nutrients, it would probably take a few years, but we have no way to scientifically validate this now, but a few years to develop a B12 deficiency. Uh, whereas meat eaters uh, that are born to meat eaters probably walk right out, not walk, but come right out of the womb and require B12 instantly. Now, this is all, once I came to this scientific revelation and validated it with scientific data and information and published a paper on it. I conclude it now why we have such a high incidence of dementia, Alzheimer's disease, neurological disorders where we think Parkinson's disease is growing. Maybe a lot of the symptomology of Parkinson's disease are neurological damages that have occurred over generations or decades with people that are not consuming adequate amounts of B12. So memory loss and nervous system problems. And boy, are they a plague today in most of the industrialized nations of the world.